Hi, I'm Lam. Welcome back to Keeping Up with the Queen. Today I'm here to tell you all about the Spring is coming. This is the newest addition to the Kayali fragrance line and Kayali, in case you haven't noticed, is a fragrance line created by Mona who is Huda's beauty's sister. So they are kind of like a family brand together. And this one is Deja Vu White Flower 57. I have here the 50 milliliters version which is retailing for 85 US dollars and they have a 100 ml version for 118 US dollars so far. Hopefully there's no price increase in the future but we can only hope. But the bottle is stunning. This is the only Kiali fragrance that I purchased in the full size because the rest of them I could get in the discovery set so I did that to save money and try out all of them. But make sure you check out all those videos. I will link them down below and I have some things to say about each of them, but today is about this one. Let's get right into it. First of all, I'm gonna read a little bit of description so that we know what's up with this. This fragrance is a warm, sultry, white floral, where luxurious tuberose empowers the senses with a seductive yet impressively elegant scent, while Sandalwood adds sophistication. The number next to the name of the fragrance means how many times they have to come back and rearrange the formulation, change up the formulation before they get to the final version that they like and the one that we have today. So they have to alter it 57 times, which makes sense because this scent is really, really nice in my opinion. Let's go on to the notes next. The top notes of Kayali's Deja Vu White Flowers has nectarine, pear, and gardenia, of course. Middle note has tuberose, Indian jasmine, and orange blossoms. So the top and the middle notes contains a lot of white florals. And then the base notes, we have patchouli, vanilla, sandalwood, and cashmere wood. So patchouli is going to add a lot of longevity and so is vanilla, but the vanilla is gonna add a lot of sweetness to the fragrance. There's sandalwood and cashmere wood, which will add a little bit of woodiness and earthiness to the base of this fragrance. So throughout the wear of it, where all the flowers are staying kind of on top, there's a base of sweetness from the vanilla and patchouli and its earthiness from the patchouli and the wood components of the base notes. That's the idea. Let me show you first the sprayer because this is iconic. Do you see how finely it mists out? The opening is very like a fresh florals. You definitely get a little bit of that sweetness and juiciness of the pear light, beautiful, sophisticated opening with a hint of sweetness, but not vanilla kind of sweetness. A floral, juicy pear kind of a sweetness. And you definitely, definitely can sense gardenia in the opening. I was a big fan of the Chanel gardenia, less exclusive uh, fragrance and I'm kind of wanting to compare the two to see which one is better because I tried that one a long time ago and I fell in love with it. And since then I love gardenia kind of scents. Middle notes, I said on my note here, I cannot smell a distinctive flower. So it, it is very well balanced. You can't really tell if it's rose or if it's jasmine. It's very, very well balanced. It is also very soft, so the opening is kind of a little bit more loud. Not really loud, but louder. And then as it, like the top notes are kind of evaporate, it gets a lot softer. There's not a lot of green notes in here, so... But it's, it has a lot of earthiness components. So it, it's rather the flower and the earth, but the earth is very... Um, well watered so it's moist and it's wet and 
it's not really a flower bouquet kind of an experience. It's more of a fragrance kind of a scent. So you don't feel like you just smell like a flower bouquet. You smell like, oh, this is a gardenia white flower fragrance, which has a little bit of warmth. And I can sense vanilla, but it doesn't jump at me. It's so that's a good thing about it because when vanilla is kind of hidden in the base of the fragrance and just helps the other notes blend in a lot better and add a little bit of feminine touch and sweetness. You can't really detect it. That's vanilla done right in fragrance. You don't want a crazy sweetness, a crazy amount of vanilla in a fragrance unless it is a gourmand um, or it's on purpose, you know. So this is, in this case, it the focus is still on the florals and the earthiness. And the vanilla is kind of like replacing the pear from the top notes. The pear added the sweetness at the beginning, but then now it's kind of gone. And the vanilla kind of replaces it in rounding it together. I also sense a little bit of bitterness. So I'm not sure if that's where the leads come in of this bouquet. It's very, very slight, and I don't know if it's reacting differently with my skin chemistry, but that's what I sense. For this fragrance, the projection is moderate, um, and as time goes by, it will get softer and softer with a very small trail of fragrance. Definitely people will recognize it, but um, it's not going to be super loud. Longevity of this um, Deja Vu White Flower is about four to five hours and then after four to five hours it's basically gone or becomes like a very soft skin scent but the white florals are disappeared at the two hour mark so after two hours it basically only the base so woodiness and earthiness from the patchouli and a little bit of sweetness from vanilla and all the florals are gone. So that's the only downside of this fragrance. I wish the florals last a lot longer um, throughout the wear, but um, I don't know if it's because of the white florals components in fragrance, because I, it seems like they're always gone, you know? They, they don't last as long in a fragrance. But I think it could also be a good side because you get to see the development and the change of the fragrance throughout each wear and it doesn't stay the same so that's a lot more interesting than something that's smelling the same if you know what i mean so it developed it changed throughout the wear and you get to experience different types of emotion different type of scents so it really is a deja vu kind of an effect um yeah so i think it's really really cool my comment here is that it's an amazing spray, yes. It's soft, feminine, sophisticated. It's reminded me of Chanel Gardenia, but I don't know if it's a dupe. I'm gonna have to test that out in a later video. It's everyday friendly. It's the floral is gone within two hours, which is could be a miss or a hit, depending on your taste. But this is not gonna be offensive. But I don't think you want to wear perfumes for other people, so you shouldn't be worried if it's offensive or not. Um, you should wear it for yourself. So it's a very soft, everyday, sophisticated fragrance. Lean more feminine, but again, I'm wearing it, so I'm not judging. You do you. And it is developing. So that's it. I think it's a good one. Next video I'm going to make is going to run over all the fragrances that Kayali offers so far. There are five of them. And I'm going to tell you which one is full bottle worthy and which one is not. And maybe all of them are. We'll have to see that video coming up soon. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this fragrance. Have you tried it? What do you think based on my description of it? And are you going to purchase it? And what other Kayali fragrance do you like in my videos mention? I have a playlist for fragrance as well. I will link it down below. Yeah, don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my future uploads. There are a lot coming. Makeup, fragrance, 
skincare, how to manage my crazy beauty collection, and so on. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. I will see you in my next video. Until then, don't flop.